uh, Ariel Elkin of Haifa in Israel starts from pole. He did a fastest lap of 216.5. And therefore, watch out for the 18. But his teammate can run effectively uh, wingman for him because... Let me interrupt real quick. What's it. happening? I'm hearing Scott Goodyear. The leader thinks they're doing a standing start. Nobody's told him to follow oh, the pace car. Wow. You can see number 24 here waving at him. Go, go, go. But Jesse Lacey behind him. So we're not sure what's going to happen here, but he needs to go. His radio yeah, there are team all the needs other to tell him to go. Telling him too, and, and he may not have radio contact. Uh, this is his first race weekend. Poor old Ariel. Uh, nice kid. I met him earlier. The go karts are in full swing, uh, but unfortunately the pace bar task took off, and our pole man has not been aware that he has to follow the pace car because he's not aware. Yeah, now go. he's got it. Okay, good. They've waved him forward, and now everybody else can go forward. No harm, no foul. So once again, we warm up the tires. As I mentioned, the two international motorsport guys start on the front row. There was just two, well, less than two tenths between them in their fastest lap. Jesse Lacey of Melbourne, Australia for Crosslink Kiwi starts in third position. Daniel Cara of the Woodlands in Texas. And Tanuta Foppy and Ambrosi. What a great sponsor is his in fourth position. Behind him, Titus Sherlock, winner of the first race from Prosper, Texas, uh, lines up fifth for Kiwi Motorsport. And then KK Juanio of Plant City, Florida, lines up sixth. Michael Costello is seventh. Our champion, Patrick Woods Toff from St. Lazare in Canada, Quebec, is in eighth position. Daniel Quimby, first weekend for the Australian from New South Wales and Doran Motorsports Group, starts ninth. Tenth is Tyke Durst for Ganella Racing. Bacon Zelenka is in 11th place, then Alex Benavites of Naples, Florida. That's a nice little number of folks from Naples, Florida, because uh, that's also where um, Michael Costello's from. So there's a nice little uh, group there. And then you've got Christian Cantu uh, of Mexico from Torreon in Mexico for Scuderia Brul. And he got two wins at the Mexican Grand Prix in F4 in the Mexican Championship. And said, right, I'll try my hand here in America. And here he is, just 16 years of age. Anna Greenmeyer, one of the few female drivers. She starts 14th from Parker, Colorado for Crosslink Kiwi. Then it's Pablo Jose Benitez from Port Orange in Florida. Luciano Martinez in 16th place. James Lawley just behind him. And... Following that is Landon Matriano Lim from Shreveport, Louisiana. For Jensen Racing, Barrett Wolf making his debut from Las Vegas. He's actually at college in Las Vegas. Jet Bowling lines up 20th from Dallas, Texas. Ava Dobson, our other female competitor. She is just 15 years of age, starting out with Jay Howard Driver Development her first season. And then Zabin Jai of Glenhead, New York, starts 22nd. Christopher Paris, 23rd. Tana DeFabis, who had an off. Uh, in the previous race, or a spin at least, in 24th. Michael Boyadis, who had uh, damage to his wing last time out, also for Jay Howard. And Eric Wisnitsky, who had a spin last time out, starts 26. And that makes sense, given that this is based on the fastest laps of the previous race. Now, hopefully, the pace car will come off this time, and we will go racing, because we're running out of light, folks. Yeah. <laughs> no lights on these cars. <laughs> I've heard that we are doing a standing start still. The okay, car good. is there uh, just, just in front of uh, turn 12, but the safety crew is there quickly, and uh, they're going to be able to move that car off, and we're going to be able to do a standing start. But that's why you see the pace car going slow to bring the field up and to give the safety crew enough time to clear. But look at the light here. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. Great time of night. And it's a great place to see from above. The drone really gives you the scale of this Texas circuit and um, wherever you're watching around the world this really is a spectacle and uh, obviously you tune in to watch Formula One or MotoGP next year we've got NASCAR here we've also got the World Endurance Championship a six-hour endurance race on Labor Day so uh, doing my little plug for the Circuit of the Americas because I am based here in the city of Austin just in the background there and I've watched this grow and grow and grow over the last 11 years, and it's been magnificent to see. It's also been really interesting to see the youngsters coming through, like Ryan Sheehan, who started right here in Formula 4, runner-up in the FR Championship. But we've got plenty of other young Texans, like Jet Bowling, uh, coming through, and many others. So delighted to see these youngsters making their way, and now with a circuit to show them 
And we were talking well, about what? the light, and you can see here that turn yeah, 20 is off. in the shade. So that is going to cool down turn 20. And Big drivers, time. like we've talked about, they're not used to racing. And you can see the whole front straight is shady, but that really doesn't matter for grip levels. But if any of these turns like turn 20, which is a high-speed corner, uh, are shady like that, that is going to change how the tires grip the track. So we might see some excitement here in the F4 U.S. Championship. It's round 17 at the Circuit of the Americas. You're absolutely right. And if there is, for example, a safety car, because that often happens in a big field like this, um, those tires are, are going to go quickly uh, lose temperature. So they'll want to get this started as quickly as possible. A massive moment for Ariel Elkin of Israel, starting on the right-hand side for International Motorsports. Uh, he was, I think, seventh in the Italian F4 championship, and he felt that the competition um in italy was a little higher but that's not surprising it's always high in italy and so he's uh, throwing his hook and trying to come out here to america and race and uh, he's starting from pole and this is a great opportunity for him in a moment the lights will go five red one two three four five out go the lights away we go then and a good start from the Israeli as he comes across the track to defend his position. He's going towards the racing line. Meanwhile, his teammate, Augusto Sato Sharifo, is trying to defend from the 16 of Jesse Lacey, the young Australian, looking very strong at the start. It's side-by-side -side action as they head down towards turn two. But out front, it is Ariel Elkin leading the way. Great start here as they snake through the Hankook S's. Really got a great start there to Ariel, but man, that, that fight pushing Jesse Lacey over into the... Oh, line. Lacey's round! Oh, poor man! Jesse Lacey, the young teenager from Melbourne, Australia, just locked grip, and that's exactly what we were talking about. The, the tire's just not quite there, and he thought he maybe had more than he did, and he lost it. What a shame. What a shame, and what a kind of an agreeable spin, just a long, yeah. casual spin. He did a good job <laughs> of just kind of turning anybody, into yeah. it, but uh, <laughs> here come the leaders here through uh, the what the hairpin section. Yes, it's actually called the bobby pin, because after Bobby Epstein, the owner of the circuit, and very dusty down there, especially offline, and now you see what we were talking about. Even our cameraman struggling to, to, you know, to keep the sunlight out of their eyes, but it's a lovely shot. Um, but it's not going to be easy when you're about a foot off the ground and heading down there. But Augusto Suta Shripa, or Oggy as he's called, in the 24 in second place, did a brilliant job at the start there to hold off the chasing pack, including Jesse Lacey. Meanwhile, uh, here we go, Woods Top, in that black helmet, the number 27, grey and orange, dives into position there. He's made up a couple. And we're keeping an eye on Titus Sherlock and Michael Costello to see where they pop out. Sherlock at the moment in fifth place, Costello still seventh. Side by side, though, the two Ganella, well, it's Ganella and the 42 of Daniel Quimby, the new boy from New South Wales in Australia. It's great to see so many Australians here. They've never had a really strong single-seater uh, championship in Australia, which is why the V8s and the Carrera Cup are so popular there. So most of the Australians travel, and they travel around the world and here in the States. It's great to have as many as we do. We've had Josh Day, who's been a champion in F4 and also did really well in FR. Uh, he's now, uh, I think he's still around, uh, or he might have gone back to Australia, but a great kid and um, a worthy champion in F4, that's for sure. So crossing the line now, Elkin leading the way in the 10. His lap, a, I'm just trying to look at the laps. No, no times yet on the board for that. Whoa, locking up big time. The 17 of Tyke Durst. Just locking up at the top of the hill there under pressure. Under the bridge and into the S's, the Mission Food S's. Tyke Durst and Daniel Quimby going at it this race. They come through here, the, the Hankook S's, and you can see Quimby Hancock and S's. Tyke Durst going at it there. I'll get me corners right. Yes, Hank and, guesses. And this is so much fun to watch. Just like in the other racing we've been seeing this weekend, it's it's pack racing. So there might be a great race for the front six, and then the next six, and the next six, and it's just really, really fun to watch. But look for uh, Augie to try to poke his head out. And I'm not sure about that Jesse Lacey spin. Did you see, was it assisted, or do you think that was just by himself? I think it was by himself, you know. It didn't look like he got hit. He didn't, you know, the car didn't move as though it had been hit from behind or anything. It just looked, and like you said, it was a slow progressive turn, which means, makes me feel that he just was gradually losing grip and just couldn't hold it, uh, and did a really good job of just spinning slowly out. Um, uh, and so that's my opinion, but we'll see. 
And let's see if he can come back into the action. It's a 30-minute race, and you can see the clock in the top left. As we take a look for the first time at Bacon Zelenka of Lions, Illinois. That's Alex Benevitz in the number 14. I like the livery of his car, but this uh, this Quimby and Tyke Durst and Benevitz and Zelenka, that is going to look like it's going to be a really good battle here. Yeah, and just behind them is the Mexican driver Christian Cantu, who was showing me his pictures of him taking, uh, as, or Carlos Slim, one of the wealthiest men in Mexico, taking a selfie with Christian uh, Cantu at the Mexican Grand Prix. And if you don't know, uh, Carlos Slim has been responsible for funding a lot of the Mexican drivers, including the current Checo Perez. So there you go. Good guy to have a selfie with. Yeah. <laughs> Out of 20, and it's getting dark down there, but Elkin still leading the way. Uh, does a 2.17.5. Now we're getting some times on the board. So a good start from the 18 of Ariel. And now we've got jostling four position. That's the 31 of Titus Sherlock, winner of the first race. Just behind, at the moment, Woods Toth. And Sherlock dispensing of the competition for a moment. Oh, he's side by side. As we look down below, look at this. As they come into the S's, something's got to give. Titus Sherlock just gets the advantage, but you can see how close it is. Really good racing between these two. So Sherlock, Costello, and of course that's the battle for second in the championship. That's why it's so close, so that, don't be surprised by that. That is for what has been an all-season-long battle. The championship wrapped up with Woods top, but it's still on for second place. And at the moment, it's Sherlock and Costello glued together in fifth and sixth. Sherlock in the 31, there he is. And right behind him is the 19 of Michael Costello of Naples, Florida. As they come down this long back straight, this is where the draft really comes in handy. It's almost like DRS to the, uh, these F4 cars. Exactly, yeah. And you can see them snaking left and right, trying to get the driver behind them out of the draft. Now, let's see if Costello does the move here, because we were he was doing great commentary about this, and now he's just done what he's talked about, and he's made it stick. That was tough, and if he keeps his foot in here as they head towards 13, he's pulled it off. That was great racing, but look at this. Back comes the 31 of Sherlock. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you don't often see anybody try to go around the outside of 13 or 14. Now he's gone the inside of 14. And he's got overtaken again, and he's taken the other one wide. Costello and Sherlock side by side as they go into McGonaghy Complex. Some fantastic wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here, and this is the race that really matters. You yeah. know, we're going to cover who's in first, second, and third, but this is the battle for second in the championship, and with only one race left in F4 tomorrow, yeah. this is the race to watch, Jonathan. Yeah, and, and it's going to go to the wire, especially unless they take each other out right now, because the advantage is with Sherlock having won the race. Costello was seventh in that first race earlier today, so they are going at it. How bent for leather, which is great to see. I just hope they don't come together at any point we're watching Costello ahead of Sherlock now so he's got ahead of him after all of that they've sorted themselves out but will they stay that no way here comes Sherlock again now through the S's this is where it was so exciting this is where it started off last time as we come through the Hancock S's nice sign who put that there <laughs> I think, well, look, everybody's getting a little bit squirrely through the S's, and yeah. that might be because that part of the track is in the shade, yeah. and the conditions have changed drastically since these gentlemen were on track. Drivers were on track just a little bit ago. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, what they've got to be careful of is uh, they hope they don't have a safety car because uh, then the conditions will really get tough out there because it's just getting colder and colder. And once the sun drops here in Texas, it goes quick. And once it's gone, it gets cold quick, too. Patrick Woods top, jinx out, has a look at the 10 of Cara. Daniel Cara, really impressive, just missed out on the pole uh, at the beginning of the weekend uh, by six thousandths of a second to Titus Sherlock. Uh, and since then, has been trying his darndest to get right up there. Look at this the man battle from for first. Great battle for first. And this is between the two international motorsport men. Uh, and this is going to be interesting because Oggy has done his job, which was to help the pole man get away. Um, effectively, I'm sure that was a discussion they had, but I, there's certainly not any team orders because neither of these two are potentially uh, going to change the championship. Although the man on form at the moment, oh, a lock up there from Elkin, uh, is definitely Sotashripa. 
Uh, he was on the podium last time out, and he would love a, a, a win himself this weekend. Jonathan, earlier today you did a great grid walk pointing out that, yes, the U.S. Championship is really a huge international match. We have so many drivers from different countries, and that's so cool to see. And you know what? That's good for American drivers, and it's good for the international drivers because, you know, what you want as a kid, uh, and certainly if your, your parents are putting the money in, you want to race against the best you can find. And I've spoken to a couple of the Mexican drivers, a couple of the Canadian drivers, and the Australian drivers, and all of them have said, this is where they want to come racing because their, their national championships aren't as strong as they would like. So that makes sense in a lot of ways. And so that's good for us. Um, and, you know, it's good for the future of this sport. And Tony Perella, of course, the owner uh, of both FR and F4, because this is just starting out. The F our championship started what in 2018 and this championship 2016 and we're getting a brand new car next year from Ligier tested by Ryan Yardley at VIR uh, and so far so good it's That's fast all I've got yeah it's 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 an interesting sounding car because it's a, a V4 um, but uh, very very interesting so uh, big things happening and exciting times for single seaters in America now, any change at the front? Well, there's battles everywhere. Here comes the 29 of Juanio. Got a chat with him at uh, VIR. Interesting kid. He's trying to get a pronunciation of his right, of his name. Yeah, and now. even he, when he tells me six times, I still can't get it right. I know, I'm the same. But look at these leaders again. Let's see if the uh, Augie has anything for Ariel Elkin all the way from Israel, and you said this is his first time with us in F4? It is. And that's yep. exciting. Welcome. He's doing really well. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and he's pretty confident. You know, he, you know, I was talking about, we were joking about the fact that I knew two other Israeli drivers, and both of them have been successful. Ido Cohen um, uh, uh, has made it up to, I think, F2, and Roy Nassani uh, was actually um, a reserve driver for Williams. Wow. So two, that's the only two other Israeli drivers I've ever heard of. He's going really deep in that Mission Food Stadium complex, but look at this, coming through 19, carrying it down the hill, back up the hill, straight into the sun, and Augie has maybe a little bit later on the brakes, but it seems like uh, Elkin can get off the turn a little bit faster. Yep, and I think that's gonna be the tone for the rest of it. Ariel was involved with a great battle with Jesse Lacey in the previous race, and uh, more of the same, please. And uh, I had to go over and meet him, and I met his dad, and I met the team, and yeah, it was really cool. Nice guy. And, and speaking uh, of Lacey, decided, he's moved whoa. all the way back up to 12th. Yeah, that's pretty. That's that's impressive. Cantu, on the other hand, has dropped down to 13th. Can't tell who came into the pits there. Oh, sure, we'll find out in a moment. Whoop, pop it out, the number 16. Lacey trying everything. Goes to the right, goes to the left, comes out, trying the over-under, but it looks like he's going to be able to hold it. And he has done. And Ben, great to see also. People like Wisinski, uh, you'll know this from SVRA, we've got a, a junior category now, which is now coming to its own next year. So it just takes uh, drivers that are a little younger, that aren't uh, ready to go to Formula 4, and gives them a chance to learn what this car's all about. Or aren't allowed. There, there are FIA yeah. rules to the, to the age. Uh, Eric Wisniewski, uh, Ava Dobson, That's right. kind of early adopters of that. And next year, I think we have uh, already Castello. eight. Costello! Oh, no. Uh, well, that's, uh, well, he knows it. That's put paid to his hope of coming second in the championship. And, yep, he's out of here. He's going to get his bike. He's on, on his bike, and he's out of here. Uh, I feel for him. Titus Sherlock, in fifth place at the moment, uh, has just been given a freebie. What a shame. Lovely kid, too. He was in Ooh. the commentary booth. Now, look at this. The two, the two international boys are going international. Toto Shripo uh, has taken the lead away from Ariel Elkin, and Elkin doesn't like it much. No, he doesn't. Now he's taking a different line. He Whoa. takes the inside there. Go on, Ariel. Nobody told him the rules here. <laughs> he, he's taking lines that no, not even Verstappen was taking. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Now side by side, Jonathan. Ah, oh, this is great race. The two international motorsport boys. Look at this. Line of Stern for now out of 18 into 19. And they are going for it. Their team manager must be hating this, but this is great for us watching. And I spoke to Errol and he said, hey, I've got a bunch of people 
watching in Israel, which is which is great for him. So they're they're watching on, and his dad's dealership in Haifa, Woo. helping make the sponsorship. Now He's what is he allowed to place. do? In, in, as far as blocking well, goes, this is where it's interesting because the, he, he is he is pushing the limits here. If somebody is actually overtaking, you can make one aggressive maneuver to defend. You can't make two or three. You can't sweep from side to side. If somebody comes up the inside of you and shows you a wheel, which is kind of what um, Oggy's doing right now, you can't make too many moves. Now, I'm not a race director, but uh, we'll find out. Scott Goodyear is the man to, to ask that question. But uh, at the moment, I think I haven't seen anything untoward, put it that way. So um, I think but it's I okay But I bet you for he now. raised the eyebrows uh, in the, the steward's the office. Eyebrows, yes. You know, I'm sure that now they're on notice and they're going to see what happens this next run. But coming into turn 11, this is who gets the best drive off of turn 11, can get behind the draft. If Augie can get right behind him, he could probably try to make another move going into 12 and into the Mission Food Stadium Complex. Let's see what happens here you know, coming down. Look at these three behind because they're having their own battle, which is great, but third, fourth, and fifth, you can see them there, are not far behind either. So if they keep this up, and one of them, of course, is our champions, Woods Toth, who's leading this group of three. So it's Woods Toth, Kara, and Sherlock, all capable of winning races if these two keep doing this, which is great to watch, but it's slowing them down. As back into the lead goes the 18, Ariel Elkin. Yeah, it seems like all that you were talking about how they were working together early on in the race. It doesn't seem not like now. that's happening anymore, and you're right. Uh, what just happened going into turn 12 slowed both of these drivers down to bring the other cars right up in there. And if they keep this going for the next 11 and a half minutes, we might see a great battle. This is really great. I'm loving this. And, of course, we're watching that clock because that's will decide exactly when uh, that white flag comes out. But there was nothing between these two. This is awesome. Look at that. Unbelievable as they come down this main straight. Let's see what happens here. The movement as they go into Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers turn one. What's going to happen, Jonathan? <laughs> well, as you can see, a bit of defensive driving by the Israeli. He looks at his mirrors, but he doesn't need to because now he's side by side with his teammate, uh, Soto Shripa, trying everything in the book. And he can't get past. And I got the feeling that uh, Soto Shripa, if he could get past, could pull away. Just think he's a little bit quicker now. We'll see through the S's here and from above. Under the bridge, they'll come into three. But you're right. Third, fourth, and fifth are coming up They're coming right quickly, behind them. You can hear the tires squealing underneath them. They are pushing to the very limit, folks. Great racing. Really impressive. And we are going to have a five-way battle in a moment. And if they're not careful, it'll be a nine-way <laughs> battle. Yeah. But this is getting good. Down towards 11 again. Nothing between the international motorsport guys. Something's got to give. And right now, Woods Toff is dragging a three-way army closer and closer to the leaders. I'm just looking at the lap times in the last few laps. And Woods Toff did a 216.4 last time out. And that Ooh. compares to a 217.6. Side by side. Oh, this is great stuff. So, Toto Tripo has the advantage. Ariel trying to dip out of the sunlight. Almost side to side. Does the switch back? Does he get the drive? Yes, he does. But the line is with the 24. Coming into the next corner. But he has to give in to Ariel Elkin, who holds the line on the outside and will hold the inside line now at 14 and now 15. But we've got a spinner, a Jay Howard card, turned around. Oh. And it looks like full course caution uh. comes out. So, uh, and that, that car should not take a long time to clear, Jonathan. So we might have a, a great restart battle here. Well, there's the international team watching on, rather nervously, as you may think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, that makes it, a, like you say, now we've got a, a full race battle between them all because that gap that they were trying to catch up with Woodstock, which was, you know, just over a second, has now come to naught. And now it's all about a restart. And then, like we saw in the uh, restart earlier today in our FR championship, there's about, 
what, what would you say about six lanes going up the hill in yeah. turn one? I want, I they, they, want at one the apex, fast, yeah. yeah, and then there's maybe two, two and a half at the exit. And by the way, having been in a single seater at this track, you cannot see that apex until you crest yeah. over the hill. Yeah, it is. It's it's really weird looking, and uh, we saw. What they're going to do in this restart is a rolling start, the number 18. If uh, he's determined by race control to be leading when the caution came out, then I think so. Uh, we'll get to kind of decide within a certain parameter when he can get on the gas. But uh, look for 24, but also Patrick Woods-Toth, Daniel Cara, Titus Sherlock, Tyke Durst to all take different lines going into one to see which one plays out the best. Okay, then well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, hopefully we'll get the resumption of this as the sun goes down. It's a showdown in Texas between Israel and Florida. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac and more so gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious mission foods now that's too fast too tasty you've got a business to run big and heavy products to ship and customers who need them now when you've got the right driver and the right equipment you can bet on a spectacular result Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team the most time and the latest technology into every customer relationship so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything. Welcome back to the Circuit of the Americas. The sun has gone down here in little old Elroy, Texas, and we've got a cracking race here to finish the day, and it's led by Israel's Ariel Elkin. His first race in the United States, and it was car number six that was strewn, stuck on track, and that's uh, Zanbin Jai uh, in the uh, J. Howard development car. They got him going again now, so off, he's, off he goes. Uh, but he just stalled it, couldn't get it going again, and he might still have stalled it again, but that's the reason we're under caution. But Elkin and Soto Shripo, teammates, uh, and nothing between them. They both shared the lead, and bit by bit, Woodstock, Kara, and Sherlock were all reeling them in and now they have a huge opportunity at this restart uh, we've seen plenty of restarts here at Coda over the years Ben um, it's anybody's game and as you were just saying you can get six wide up the hill but, <laughs> but but you march them up to the top of the hill and then you march them down again yeah and watch <laughs> for Jesse Lacey starting in ninth in that uh, speed tour blue car to really take some chances here because I'm guessing he's a little bit upset with himself for the spin there through the Hankook yep. S's and then uh, it could be anybody's game, but Jesse Lacey back in the points. Yeah, it's been a good season, and we've had some good talent coming through here. And like I said, just a reminder, this is where Kyle Kirkwood, now an Indy star, started. This is where Dakota Dickerson, so many others, Raul Hyman, um, you know, uh, going on from F4 to FR, and that's the next stage. And next year, it'll be a new car. Uh, and remember, the new car, we've seen it tested at VIR by Ryan Yardley, uh, another FR driver, former driver, another Kiwi. Uh, but he tested it, and it's a beautiful-looking car. And he's coming, and I think, uh, I think it might be retirement time for the six. So, unfortunately, uh, he's given up the ghost. But, yeah, this is, the, nah, this is the scenario I really didn't want for these drivers, is that these tires are now getting colder and cooler and cooler. And the, the sun is going down. The track is getting shadier and shadier. We're seeing there the camera operators are uh, zeroing in on Jesse Lacey because I expect him to try to take two or three positions by the time he gets up to the top of the hill. What about uh, Daniel Quimby? Uh, new to the season, series this, this time out, the Australian in seventh. You mentioned Lacey. He's been here all year and has already had a, a win. And Jesse Lacey looking for, like you say, a really good restart here. So where is he going to get on the gas to start this? What, strategically, where would you tell him? Uh, you know, it's a tough one. Uh, I, I would actually be very careful here because if I was smart, I'd know that turn 20 is going to be a little bit tough. So I wouldn't want to be powering into 20 right now uh, and pushing too hard out of that corner. I would literally wait to the apex here and then, and, and then literally get to that corner and, and drive as fast as I could 
uh, as soon as I see that apex. And that's exactly what he's yep. done, pretty much. And it away he goes. Good. Three Luigi. minutes to go, and that was a great takeoff by Elkin. Has a quick look in the mirrors, and his teammate's still there. Meanwhile, Toff, under pressure now from... Oh, the number 10 of Cara, who gets sideways for a moment. Daniel Cara from Woodlands in Texas. But gathers it all together, but out front... Ariel Elkin continues to lead. Now, we should get the white flag next time by, but this is going to be... You can see that they're pushing, and the tyres are starting to slide underneath him. There's not a lot of grip out there in these cold and cooler conditions after that uh, slowdown two or three laps, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a, a few spinners here. We saw some early this morning because they were out at 9 o'clock this morning and it was similar conditions but for the opposite way, obviously. Yeah, I'm just listening. You can hear the tires yes, really fighting for grip. The sun is basically down, Gone. ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. and this is the turn that's going to be very crucial as they come in. And Augie has, uh, has closed the gap just a little bit, Jonathan. Yeah, and you can see this is like the Indy 500. He's trying to avoid the toe. Uh, and that's enough for uh, Oggy. He comes side by side. It's last of the late breakers, but Ariel holds him off. Good racing between these two. Fair racing as well. This is really good stuff. Now, can sort of Shrepo come oh. back at him? He's so close as they come through 13. He's right on his tailpipe. I'd be really surprised if there wasn't some contact just right there in the Mission Foods complex. Good drive by Otto. Trooper, and he does take the lead because a mistake there. Rare one by Elkin, and look who's caught up. Woods top, the champion, right there in third and looking for a win himself. What a race this is turning out to be. F4 putting on a show here in the final rounds. Now look for that white flag as they come around turn 20 here. And now he's, like you said, Augie's kind of picking up a gap here. And he needs it. There's the white flag. And they all see it. And now he'll come to the race line, and he'll also try to avoid that slipstream. I don't think, to be honest, Ariel's close enough to get the slipstream. I don't either. Yeah, he's just far enough behind. Augie pulling a pretty big gap here, but anything can happen going into the Hankook S's if we see Jesse Lacey kind of go out far driver's left, pushing him way out right on the exit. And Ariel, Aiken, uh, Ariel Elkin now has to worry in his mirrors about the man behind him, the champion, Woods Toff from Canada in Quebec. And just behind him, Daniel Cara, who had a moment a few minutes ago. Sherlock, the winner of the first race, is fifth. Quimby, sixth. Lacey up to seventh. You were right. Got a good restart. Durst, eighth. Juanio in ninth position. And then Cantu, the young Mexican, the 16-year-old, is in tenth position. Martinez, Benavitez, 12th. Zelenka, 13th. Greenmeyer, 14th. And Benitez in 15th place. I think the only option Elkin has here is to get a really good exit out of 11 yep. and try to get that draft better down into 12. And then maybe there's two or three pass positions left after that, in my opinion, Jonathan. You may know better. No, I think you're absolutely right. And it could all go horribly right, but it could go wrong for both the international motorsport if they try to outduke each other and outbreak each other into 12. Right now, Ariel isn't close enough to get that slipstream, and in fact, he's trying to avoid being slipstreamed himself. Meanwhile, Woods Top is also trying to avoid that. Here they come, they've sorted themselves out. That was a great straight by Soda Shripa. He's broken the back of this as they come into the stadium section, uh, and that is a great start to the Mission Food Stadium section for him. Look at that, Patrick Woods Top taking a little bit better line there than Elkin, but Elkin defending just fine as they come into now the, what do you call it, the McConaughey section? The McConaughey complex, I'm calling it, yeah. Nice. I love that. Because <laughs> it's all right, all right, and all right. <laughs> so here we go, last two corners, and we've seen an overtake for a win in the FR race previous. It was brilliantly done by Oliver Westling. And now, here we go, last corner, but it's gonna be Ogi Soto Shripa of Florida, who takes the win ahead of his teammate at International Motorsport. Ariel Elkin will be disappointed with that because he led for most of the way. But Soto Shripa wins again, and that is excellent stuff by him. 
Another good result by Woods Toff. Another podium for our champion as he extends that lead overall. But Cara think, takes fourth, Sherlock fifth, and Quimby sixth. I think that's the story, though. Titus Sherlock in fifth. Actually, another story for you. Lacey, the one Australian wow. in sixth place, beat the other Australian, Quimby, for sixth place. Oh, that had plenty, didn't it? It did, yeah. That was really good racing. So proud of the drivers in F4. Lots of fun to watch. And it's really neat now, coming late into the season like this, to really see the development that's happened in this just really just a short season and uh, I attribute that to the staff especially Scott Goodyear I've never met another professional driver with somebody with the accolades of Scott Goodyear that really does care so cares much so about much. driver development and character and this not just drivers on the track the whole the whole shebang to be a professional race car driver uh, if you have a teenage son or daughter wanting to get into racing, I would definitely look at this because they're in very good hands with Mr. Goodyear and his staff. Yeah, and, and he works for a day like today where it's good. There's the sun. Uh, it's great. It's, they really do work for a day like this because it's good racecraft. Obviously, it's an expensive sport. You want to get as many laps in as possible. It's the end of the day. The sun's going down. You don't want safety car after safety car. You want good racing. They get good experience that way, and they show good racecraft. That's all that Scott Goodyear wants from it, and we can take a look then at the results as the Sundown Showdown finishes with Augusto Soto Sripa of International Motorsport beating his teammate Ariel Elkin, who started from the pole. Our champion, Patrick Woods-Toth of Quebec in Canada, takes third. Then it's Cara, Daniel Cara of Cara Origin Motorsports in fourth. Titus Sherlock uh, of Prosper, Texas takes fifth. Another crosslink driver, Jesse Lacey in sixth place, just beating Daniel Quimby on the last lap for Doran Motorsports. Tyke Durst eighth. Keikai Huiano, uh, Huanio, I'm going to get it right. Uh, in ninth position, Christian Cantu of Scuderia Buell in tenth position. Well, that was fun, Ben Sissel. That's what we wanted. That was great. We just got it in before we're going to lose light fairly quickly, but we'll get the podium in, I'm sure. And Mr. Fippin will be hurtling down there. But a good day's racing. And just quickly, uh, Ben, it's all happening tomorrow. SVRA in action. Yeah, we've got SVRA. Everybody's going to be uh, finalizing their championships because Sunday we have the national championship and the helmet awards going out and then uh, Sunday we also have some Trans Am races. What are the helmet awards? Tell, tell that the is the, the gold bell helmet is the vintage racing national championship the most coveted trophies in vintage racing but look at the celebration happening here one of my favorites to see here on the podium I can't wait to hear uh, John Fippen and the interview that we get from how do you say his name? Soto Shripa. See that's a, that's awesome. <laughs> He's so excited. I'm sure his family's here. You're going to see lots of hugs. That's the team boss. I think that's Dad. But that's great. That's really good. And he's been on the podium already, and now he takes it to the win. There's the smile. <laughs> and in a moment, John Fippen will grab the mic. There, I can see him at the corner of my eye, making his way. And look at this. And this I is bet good you they had a, a blast. Yeah, that was good. Ah, that's nice. That's nice to see. Good teamwork. And obviously, they work together as teammates. And yeah, that's what you want to see at the end of a race. And uh, let's head down to John Fippen, who's got our winner, Soto Shripa. Augie Soto Sharipa, we've been bragging on you all weekend long. You've had a fantastic last couple of rounds of racing. Your fourth win on the season. How does it feel? I mean, how can it feel? It feels great. I'm like, super happy. Um, a year ago, I wouldn't think I'd be here. So just being here is an honor. Look at this guy. I'm really proud of my teammate. Uh, one, two for the team. First time ever we bring two cars and we made it work. I'm over the moon right now, man. Yeah, Ariel led most of the race, but you had, you had a little something for him on the last lap. Yeah, I mean, he's a good driver, man. Um, he has a lot of experience. Uh, we raced hard. Uh, most importantly, both cars made it here. That was the, the deal. So we did it. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Four-time winner, Jonathan. Doesn't get any better than that. And there's not that many winners uh, from the Formula 4 this year with the domination of Woods Toth. So congratulations to him. Four wins for Soda Shripo. And you can tell how much it meant to him <laughs> and the team. Now, there's the family, I think. Well, my thanks to Ben Sissel and to all my guest commentators.